Hey guys, Bad Science here, and today I am back for episode number 24 of r slash malicious compliance. Com contrary to what you see on the screen right now, I'm actually going to be doing a mega large story. So, please bear with me while I do the slowest fucking scroll down to the one I found. Because Reddit is just like, nah, we're not going to work today. We're gonna be here for a bit. I hope you enjoy this bit. Hey, we finally made it to this story. Yes, that's gonna be uncut in the video because I don't like editing that much. So uh, today's singular story is how my new boss lost his fingers. Sounds interesting, sounds gory, let's go. <laughs> Back in the early 2000s, I was a management trainee for a manufacturing company in the UK, and I was responsible for quality control and production management. I was 22 years old, keen as punch, and ready to change the world. About 11 months into the role, I got a new boss. Let's call him Red. <laughs> Red was also the company owner's son and was basically a 45 year old fuck up who had only been a drug dealer slash DJ and now stood to inherit the entire company. His, his management style was, let's say, interesting. <laughs> it would, he would, and he would deviate from screaming at you for the most benign thing ever to I can't deal with the pressure so I'm going home for the day in a matter of hours. He also thought he was a manufacturing genius. <laughs> Just because uh, his ideas were batshit crazy, but he would scream at anyone who questioned him. There was a 52 year old machine operative, let's call him a Roy, who worked on the same machine for over 30 years. Roy could tell when his machine was two weeks away from a breakdown, just because it sounded different. He was truly at one with his machine. Fred decided that we would modify Roy's machine so they could extend the range of products we could manufacture. In order to do this, he decided that we could, would add an additional spiel to the machine. The problem was that each product would finish at a different time and you would need to remove a product from the machine while the other one was still spinning. Oh, okay, here's how we're going to lose figures, huh? <laughs> Roy protested and said he'd n never use it. But Fred went ahead and modified it over the weekend with a subcontractor. On Monday, Roy said, You must be joking, I'm not using that. Fred said, You will use it, or you'll be looking for a new job tomorrow. Roy said, It's not safe, and I won't use it. If you try to make me, I will report you to the HSE. And then Fred said, If you report me, I'll make sure you don't find work ever again. So Roy smiled and said, Okay. Fine, I'll load the next job, but you can run it first. Roy loaded on his next job and took two steps back. He, and he also looked at me and said, stand back. <laughs> Fred started the machine and it all went well for about 30 seconds. The first job had reached the diameter required and Fred pressed stop. However, he had now had to lean over the other job that was still running at 2000 RPM. It didn't... I didn't see it happen, but I heard an awful spindle with his face and greasy long black hair. What? A Fred? F oh, I heard an awful scream, and then I and then saw blood spurting everywhere. Fred fainted into the, onto the machine, narrowly missing the spindle with his face and greasy long black hair. We pressed the emergency stop and picked him up, and that's when I spotted his fingers in the machine. I picked up two milk fingers and gave them to a colleague who put it into a freezer bag, which was a waste of time because they couldn't reattach them. They were too mangled. Fred never gave back to work. Apparently, he told his father he wasn't cut out for running the company, and I also left about six months later. I saw recently that it was bought out in a management buyout, and good old Roy was the operations director. Good for him. I totally fucked up on that sentence towards the end. I don't know what happened to my brain. <laughs> mm. 
Oh my gosh. But Jesus Christ, man. It was bloody and gory just like I expected. And the idiot lost his two middle fingers. <laughs> like, was it on just the one hand or was it actually both the rude fingers? Both his middle fingers just gone. Because if it was both his middle fingers gone, I would laugh my ass off. But if it was just two fingers on one hand, it's not as funny. Because, <laughs> you know, he's like, Fred is the type of person to just be like, fuck you all, I'm not doing this anymore. It's like, oh, no, fuck you all, I'm going home for the day. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ, you are a madman. Why do you think that was a good idea? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was actually rather short, so I'm going to I'm going to toss in a a uh, small story to fill out the time. He can't wait outside. Guess what? Now he's waiting inside. One day at work for my lunch break, I decided to run around the corner to McDonald's. The drive through was packed, so I decided to just go inside. There was a homeless fellow out front who wasn't asking for money, but some food. I could tell he was legitimately in a bad way, so I told him, Yeah, no problem, man. Sit tight. I'll bring you a couple of McDoubles. I ordered two for me and two for him. As I waited for our order to be called, I noticed an employee had gone outside to pass him and tell him he can't be there and has to leave, etc. I go out and explain he's waiting for me. I was going to bring him some food. The worker adamantly stated that he cannot stand out front because it's bothering other customers. While I wasn't about to let him run in, let them run him off because he's hungry and actually about to get some food. So I decided instead of taking my food back, my food back to the office, I'd go ahead and eat in the restaurant with my new friend as company. Like two minutes later, an uh, order is called, and while we ate, we had a nice chat. He told me about why he's homeless and why he can't trust the shelters here, etc. After we finished eating, we both left the restaurant and parted ways. Never saw him again, but he seemed like an alright guy. TLDR brought a homeless guy lunch. The staff didn't want him waiting outside for it, so I brought him inside as my lunch guest. <laughs> Just. No. Nah. It's just like, I'm getting this guy food out of the kindness of my heart. He's not allowed to wait outside, because he's, even though he's homeless. Okay, I'll bring him in, and we'll sit down and have lunch in your restaurant. If you're gonna compl you can't really complain if he's a customer. <laughs> Oh, and with that, I'm going to end this episode here. This episode was an absolute huge <laughs> Anyways, links will be in the description to my main channel and my and this channel. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. A ding, a ding. Links also on the screen to the last video and the playlist. I'm Mad Scientist. Mad Scientist out.